Here's pre-calc. This is problem 9-107. It says two forces with magnitudes 120 and 250 Newton act on, I think that's Newton, <laughs> act on an object of negligible mass as shown in the diagram at right. So this diagram, if you don't pay attention to Earth, at first I didn't really pay attention to the diagram, um, but it turns out the diagram tells us something about the component form of this um, horizontal uh, this horizontal vector. This horizontal vector, because it's, well, horizontal, um, the x coordinate is going to be 250, and the y co coordinate is going to be 0. So that's kind of like a little piece of information they didn't give you, but you would get that by looking at the diagram. Um, and it says, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force if theta is 25. So they want that angle to be 25. So let me show what I did. So this is a notation that you can use. This um, is 120 at 25 degrees. So the magnitude is 120 and the direction is 25 degrees. And so if you remember about how to put, I want to add, I want to get the resultant, so I have to add these two vectors together. And this, this says zero degrees. And so if you remember, cosine can give you the, the horizontal component and sine can give you the vertical component. And remember, because it's like adjacent and this one's hypotenuse. So I can use 120 times cosine of 25, if that's 25. Um, I just put that in my calculator, and I got 108.75. And then I can, um, I got the vertical component by going 120 times sine of 25. I just typed that into my calculator and that gave me 50.71 and I want to add that to this other component and remember we said it was it was just going to be 250 comma 0 because it's going 250 to the right and it's going 0 up and then when I add them up I just added them component wise and I got this so that is the resultant vector in component form but since we started out in this, uh, I want to say like polar form, in this, we started out in this form, I need to um, finish it out in the same form. So what I'm going to do is get the magnitude and direction. So the magnitude, I think I did that first. I got, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I, so I did all that work and I got 362.32 and then for the direction I'd used inverse tangent because it's opposite over adjacent and I got 8.05 and if I want to write it all fancy I can write the magnitude here and then like a little angle measure and then that's the direction so that's a way of writing this vector you just write the magnitude and then you write the direction so that was letter A. So now for letter B, it's kind of more of the same. Letter B asked us to get the magnitude and direction of, of the resultant force, that means you have to add them up, if theta is 20, or 45. So I'm going to just go through that whole same um, little routine, but now I'm just going to use 45 degrees instead of 25. So I remembered that I got the vertical, sorry, the horizontal component by using cosine and I got the vertical component by using sine. And so then I'm going to add that to this vector, the 250 comma zero. And that gives me, that's the new um, vector. It's the resultant vector, but I want to put it in uh, I want to find the magnitude and direction. 
So I find the magnitude with Pythagorean theorem, and I find the direction with inverse tangent, just like I did on the last problem, and then I just rewrote it like this. And then on letter C, it's just the same exact little routine all over again, but with 65. So or horizontal component, vertical component, add it to that other vector, that, that one that's just a horizontal line. Um, you get the, new, the resultant vector, and then you're going to um, use Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude. And then you're going to use inverse tangent to get the direction. And if you want to write it fancy, you can write it with the magnitude and then the direction. So now we're on letter D. Letter D was, I feel like it was kind of mean to this, but express the magnitude of the resultant vector as a function of theta, where theta is between 0 and 180. So they come up with this. Um, I know that I'm not going to get just a regular answer. It's going to be in terms of theta. So I know that there was kind of a little procedure that I, you know, the first one I did, I wrote it all out like this, but then I started seeing there's a little routine here. And the first part of the routine was to write 120 times cosine theta. And then I'm going to go 120, well, like, let's look back on letter C. We went 120 times cosine theta and 120 times sine theta, and then we added those to the other vector, but the other vector kept always being um, 250 and 0. And then we ended up adding the 120 cosine theta to the 250. So that's kind of what I'm doing right here. I'm adding the 120 cosine theta to the 250 cosine theta. And kind of ignore the little squaring and unsquaring. This is because of the mag this is because Pythagorean theorem, but let's just look on the inside here. Um, here's where I'm adding, see how we're adding the sine? Remember this is 120 sine theta. And then this was 250 times sine of theta, or sorry, not sine of theta, sine of zero. These are both sine, cosine of zero is one, and sine of zero is zero. So we end up with that, because cosine of zero is one. So we end up with this. We can't get, do anything about this part. Let me autofocus. Um, this one. Sine is zero, zero, so, okay. So now, it's, it's kind of cool what happens though. I squared this out. You know how you square the first thing, and then you square the last thing, and then you take the first thing times the last thing times two? Like basically put this in an area model box, and you will get this. You'll get these three terms out of it. You'll get this trinomial right here. And then when I square this one, it just ends up being this. And guess what? Si uh, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals zero, or sorry, equals one. So I moved this one, you know, this one and this one. I put them like next to each other and I factored out the 144, sorry, the 14,400. And then cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. And then the rest of this is just still waiting to be dealt with. Um, so there's the one. And here is um, what we end up with. We combine the, the two constant terms, and we get this constant term here. And then we've still got this uh, coefficient on the cosine theta. And then you can actually factor out 100. You know, because see how they have both have two zeros on it? And so that comes out as a 10, and you end up with, it's hard to read, 10 square root 769 plus 6,000 cosine theta. That's what you end up with right there.